What happens when you combine oral finasteride with topical minoxidil? Do you get better results compared to using either drug on its own? And what if you stop taking the minoxidil? Will the finasteride on its own be enough to maintain the hair growth? You'll get all these answers and more in today's video. Stay tuned. For those viewers in the UK, topical finasteride is now available via doctor's prescription at hairguard.co.uk. The topical finasteride is enhanced with minoxidil, tretinoin, adenosine, caffeine, and more. Head over to hairguard.co.uk to learn more about Maxoxidil Pro. So minoxidil and finasteride, can you combine them? And if you could, would you actually want to do this? Now, before anything else, if you're interested in combining topical finasteride with minoxidil, you will need a doctor's prescription for that. And at the end of this video, I'll show you the best way to do this. But back to today's topic, oral finasteride with topical minoxidil. So on paper, before we even look at the data, the idea appears appealing. For starters, minoxidil is topical and finasteride is oral, so you have complementary methods of administration something which is great for a multi-prong approach. But secondly, and perhaps more importantly, these two drugs have different mechanisms of action. Finasteride is a classical DHT blocker. It inhibits the action of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. And without this enzyme, your body cannot convert testosterone to DHT, meaning that the DHT levels in your blood and in your scalp plummet and you get some of the hair back. Fingers crossed. But minoxidil, on the other hand, does not work like that. It's just a generic hair growth agonist. It directly stimulates your follicles to start producing more hair. Now, this might be down to minoxidil's action of increasing blood flow in the scalp, but at this point, we're not quite sure about that. What we do know is that whatever minoxidil does, it has nothing to do with DHT whatsoever. So your DHT levels will not be affected when you're on minoxidil. So because finasteride and minoxidil work in different ways, it's very likely that you'll get better results by combining the two. Now, lastly, the fact that these two drugs have completely different mechanisms of action means that you're unlikely to get any nasty drug interactions. This can generally be a big problem when you're in a combination therapy, because if you get two or more drugs that work on the same molecular pathway on the body, this can lead to side effects that are more severe and more nasty compared to either drug on its own. But given what we've just discussed, you shouldn't have to worry about drug interactions in this case. Now, looking at the actual published research, there's surprisingly few studies on this combination treatment. The first study was published in 2002 out of India. 100 men with androgenetic alopecia grades two to five were randomly assigned to various treatment groups. This included one milligram oral finasteride only, 2% topical minoxidil only, and a combination group that received both treatments at the same time. Another group was also treated with a combination of oral finasteride with ketoconazole shampoo. Now, treatment in all groups lasted lasted for one year. The outcomes were measured at three months, six months, and finally when the study ended after one year. And the outcomes measured were the patient's self-assessment of the treatment results, as well as their treating doctor's assessment. The results? The combination group of finasteride with minoxidil gave the best results. This was followed by finasteride on its own with or without ketoconazole shampoo. And minoxidil monotherapy gave the worst results of the three. To see what kind of differences we're talking about, let's see how the doctors assess the efficacies. The scale they use ranged from minus one for mild deterioration, plus one for mild improvement, plus two for moderate improvement, and plus three for marked improvement. Out of all the men in this study, only some of the men that were in the combination group of finasteride plus minoxidil got the best possible rating of plus three. You can see what qualifies as a plus three in these before and after photos. The man has a rather unusual balding pattern on the top with a relatively intact hairline. On the left, you see his head at the start of treatment and on the right after 12 months of the combination treatment. This is pretty impressive, don't you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. So when all was said and done, around 5% of men in the combination treatment of minoxidil plus finasteride got the plus three rating, but not a single man in the other treatment groups got this rating. Furthermore, 66% of the men in the combination group got the plus two for moderate improvement and the rest got a plus one for the minimal improvement, which means that every single patient in this group showed at least some improvement. But this wasn't the case in the finasteride or minoxidil monotherapy groups. In those groups, you got some men that either showed no improvement at all or 
or even declined. But in the combination group, you couldn't find any such examples. Now, the other large study was published five years ago out of China. This was a much larger study. There were 500 men in total and three treatment groups, finasteride monotherapy, minoxidil monotherapy, and a combination group that got both treatments. The patients were randomly assigned and the treatment in each group lasted again for 12 months. The study outcome was the evaluation by two dermatologists who were blinded as to the treatment. In other words, they didn't know what kind of treatment the men whose heads they were looking at had received. And the results were very similar to the Indian study. The combination group of finasteride plus minoxidil got the best results and these were followed by the finasteride only group and the weakest results were given by the minoxidil only group. In particular, 94.1% of men in the combination treatment showed some degree of improvement. This compared to 80.5% for the finasteride group and 59% for the minoxidil group. Of the remaining 6% in the combination treatment who did not improve, around 4% showed no change and around 2% had some decline. With regards to the excellent responders who got the plus three for the best possible regrowth, these were predominantly in the combination group, about 30%, which compared to about 50% for the finasteride group and around 8% for the minoxidil group. Now, not not only did the combination treatments give better results at the end of the study, but these results were also quicker to show. After three months, it had already started to give better results compared to the other treatments. You can see the example of a man who received the combination treatment in these images. On the far left at the start of treatment, in the middle after six months, and at the right after 12 months. Now, let's talk about the side effects. As we discussed earlier, and as you'd expect, these studies didn't report any novel or unexpected side effects. Remember what we said, minoxidil and finasteride do not interact. So, in some patients, the oral finasteride caused the classic sexual symptoms of reduced libido and erectile dysfunction. And in other patients, the minoxidil caused the classical topical symptoms of itching, redness, irritation, headaches, etc. Exactly what you'd expect. No new side effects, nothing requiring hospitalization or anything like that. Now, a good question to ask and something that we get asked a lot in the comments is what happens if you decide to go on a combination treatment of oral finasteride plus topical minoxidil? Then you get tired of using the minoxidil and you stick to the finasteride only. Will you keep the hair that you regrew when you were on the combination treatment? And the answer is no you will lose a lot of the hair you've regrown. You see, what minoxidil does is it artificially keeps the hair follicles in an extended growth phase. And then when you stop using minoxidil, all these hair follicles switch back into the resting phase, the so-called telogen. Telogen is when the hair stops growing and eventually sheds its terminal hair. And this massive transition into telogen is called telogen effluvium. And finasteride on its own will not be able to prevent it, precisely because finasteride has a different mechanism of action. So if you're considering combining these two meds, there's no point in saying, okay, I'm going to add minoxidil to my treatment for a few months. And then if I get tired or if I get bored, I'm just going to stop it. And I'm just going to stick to the Propecia to keep all the hairs I've gained while on the minoxidil. It's not going to work like that. You're going to lose all the hair you regrew on the minoxidil and then some. And the Propecia on its own will not be able to stop this. Now, there was a very interesting paper out of Italy in 2003 that reported on exactly this, namely patients who were in a combination treatment of finasteride plus minoxidil. And then for whatever reason, they stopped using the minoxidil and just stuck to the finasteride only. After about three months, the men lost all the hair they had regrown while on the minoxidil, even though they were still on the finasteride. You can see in these photos the example of a 24-year-old man who presented with moderate to severe hair loss for treatment. Then, after a combination treatment that lasted for two years, and then after he had discontinued the minoxidil but had stayed on the finasteride. As you can see, this guy ended up with more severe baldness than he had in the first place. So if you're going to combine the two medications, be prepared and committed to stick to it for the long run. It's one of those things where you either have to go all in or nothing at all. There is no middle ground. So the moment of truth, what is our verdict on combining oral finasteride with topical minoxidil? Well, with regards to efficacy, our verdict is a thumbs up. The combination does work and statistically it gives better results than either treatment on its own. Most of the times it won't be mind blowing, but you will see a clear improvement to your hair. Whereas if you go either with finasteride or minoxidil monotherapy, there's always a good chance you'll be a complete non-responder and particularly with respect to minoxidil. But you'd have to be quite unlucky for this to happen when you combine the two treatments. The other big advantage of this combination treatment is that there's no interaction side effects. You get the side effects of finasteride, you add those of minoxidil, and that's it. Depending on how your body reacts, you either might just get the finasteride side effects or just the minoxidil side effects or both, or if you're lucky, neither. 
So if this is such a good treatment, why aren't more guys doing it? Now, I'm going to speculate here because we don't really have any solid data to go by. So we don't really know the percentage of men who combine the two treatments. And at any rate, it will be very difficult to get them because finasteride is prescription only and minoxidil is over the counter. But the sense we get from being in the hair loss community all these years, from speaking to you guys, from the comments, from the forums, etc., is that there's just not that many men out there who are on this combination treatment. There's many non-responders to minoxidil who switch over to finasteride and vice versa. But we don't think there's that many men that use both treatments at the same time. And if we had to take a guess as to why this is, we'd have to say that it probably has to do with the strengths of the two medications. Finasteride is going to appeal to men that don't want the hassle of a topical used twice a day for the rest of their lives. Now, these men won't be motivated to add minoxidil to their daily treatment in order to get some small benefits. It's just not going to be worth the hassle for them. The reason they went with finasteride in the first place was precisely so they didn't have to deal with that. Now, on the other hand, the typical minoxidil user will have often gone with it instead of finasteride on account of finasteride side effects. Now, this is typically your kind of person who wouldn't risk a decrease in sexual function, even a very small one, for all the hairs in the world. So he would never even touch finasteride, not even with a 10-foot pole, even if this medication is easier to take and is more likely to give you regrowth. Now, if you're watching this video from the UK, I have some great news for you. If you're interested in combining minoxidil with finasteride, but want to reduce the chances of the systemic side effects of finasteride, the clinical team at hairguard.co.uk can offer you a free online consultation. And if you're suitable, the doctor can prescribe you topical finasteride. Our topical finasteride formula is known as Maxoxidil Pro, and it's a combination of topical finasteride and 5% minoxidil, meaning you block the HT at the level of the following while also supercharging your hair growth cycle. But that's not all. This unique prescription-only formula also contains tretinoin. This has been clinically proven to enhance the efficacy of minoxidil as well as promote hair growth on its own. Other ingredients include caffeine, adenosine, and melatonin, all proven hair growth agents. This is suitable for men with Norwood 1 to 6 pattern hair loss. And as I mentioned, it's currently only available to men in the UK via our online doctor's prescription. So if you want the ultimate in topic hair growth strength and our clinical team deems you suitable for a prescription, then topical finasteride could be a good fit for you. Check out the link below this video for your free online doctor's consultation if you're in the UK. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Till next time, this was Tony for HairGuard. Take care.